creating cultural awareness and understanding. This is Culture Click. Culture Click is written and produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. On June 10th, more businesses started to open up again in Minnesota after being closed because of the COVID 19 pandemic. The city of Winona has been striving to help our local businesses get back in business as quickly and safely as they can. Today on Culture Click, we hear from Winona City Manager Steve Sarvey. Steve gives us the lowdown on the do's and don'ts of reopening with safety and social distancing in mind for both business owners and customers alike. What will area dining look like or summer recreation like the local swimming pool? I'm Bill Stoneberg asking you to stick around as we discuss reopening Winona with City Manager Steve Sarvey on Culture Click. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Steve. Thanks for having me, Bill. Sure, sure. Um, as everyone kind of knows, or they may not, but the stay-at-home order has now become the Stay Safe Minnesota order as of June 10th, and more businesses were allowed to open with reduced capacity and some other uh, guidelines in place. Uh, Steve, one thing that I thought was uh, pretty cool in particular was that the city has approved an emergency ordinance designed to allow bars, restaurants, retail and service businesses uh, to temporarily use outdoor public spaces adjacent to their business. And personally, I think that's a great way we can help our local businesses kind of get back in the game and get back on their feet. Um, And I've seen examples of this with bars and restaurants with outdoor seating. Uh, Steve, can you give me an example of how like a service business might utilize this? Like, what would that look like? Uh, It could be uh, that they put some of their merchandise out on the street or in one of the um, parking stalls on the street. That they're blocked off as well. Okay. So it, it, it takes some of their uh, footprint from indoors and puts it out outside. Uh, we're we're looking for any opportunities to uh, you know to increase uh, traffic downtown uh, to these small businesses that that don't have the the indoor capacity like a, a Walmart does or a Target. Right. And um, allowing them on the on the sidewalks, I think, creates that sort of an atmosphere. Plus. I just think it it adds to you know a different vibe downtown, and um, that might attract people as well. Just to just to sort of wander around, uh, maybe grab something to eat, something to drink, do a little shopping, and um, just have a good experience downtown. We've all been cooped up so long that um, it's nice to be able to get back together, uh, socially distant, of course, mm-hmm. but uh, you know to get back together and and, and celebrate that uh, that we've made it this far. Right, right. I know personally, I've utilized several uh, patio spaces. Uh, since they were allowed to open outside, um, and it's it's been great. <laughs> it's been really great to get out and see people. Yeah, it, it, it's been a little bit of a struggle. We uh, you know, we stood up a COVID nineteen response team from city employees and some members of the public, including I think there's at least one uh, Monona State professor, and they they were charged with taking the governor's orders and trying to make sense out of them, and um, and help guide us uh, as a community into how we can reopen. Um, and then, what sort of markers we ought to be using if we need to, unfortunately, revert if the uh, if the virus uh, rears up again? Mm-hmm. And so uh, we were ready and prepared in in mid May to uh, with the governor's order that we thought was going to be 25 percent indoors and the, and and then an outdoor experience. And when the governor said no indoor, it was only outdoor. Uh, that that caused us to have to revamp our plan, mm-hmm. uh, but I think in the long run, uh, having a fifty percent capacity at this point and outdoor space, I think it opens up some opportunities. Uh, maybe not even just through this pandemic, but it might it might offer us a different look at how an owner could operate uh, in the future as well. You, know, you think of great places around the world; most of them have seating outside. You think of mm-hmm. Paris and um, you know other cities like that. They um, you know. They have those. They t- have taken those opportunities, and it's something that we should explore as a city uh, post-pandemic. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. I love the outdoor spaces, and um, you know, and and as far as it pertains to the emergency ordinance, I personally, I think it really shows how much the city cares about the community and our local businesses here, uh, things like that. Um, as far as capacity goes, I, I heard you say fifty percent. So that's pertaining to indoor seating correctly that's correct it's, okay. it's the nut the fire code number um you know it's half of that number is sort of the starting point you still have to provide for you know some social distancing mm-hmm. that's where some of these orders that are coming down from the governor um it it may sound good at the headline level but when you start to dig into what the exceptions are and what the rules are 
it makes it a lot more difficult. We're struggling right now with uh, with reopening the pool, uh, with reopening other city facilities because um, just the governor saying you can open the pool now when you start digging into it, it, it really presents some rather difficult challenges for us to consider as a community. And I also make, want to make sure I back up and we want to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the downtown merchants mm-hmm. that, that are part of the Main Street, uh, Main Street uh, Committee as well for helping us to get those uh, that ordinance out as quickly as we did in order to meet the needs uh, of the of the businesses downtown and throughout the city because we wanted to make sure we were writing an ordinance that isn't just downtown focused, although primarily that's where it is. There are other restaurants and bars that have similar situations throughout the neighborhood and throughout the cities, and we want to make sure that they have those opportunities to spread outside as well. Right, right. I'm just kind of curious, since you mentioned the pools, that's something that I've been wondering about a lot lately. Like, how um, do we know yet how we're going forward with that or what the capacity will be? Or Well, we, we'll need to get some guidance from the um, from the council. Okay. Um, and and understand what what the intent is. What when we look at the governor's order, fifty uh, percent capacity of the pool. And again, it it sounds great. Our our pool uh, by fire rating uh, can handle eight hundred people. Mm-hmm. So you say fifty percent of that's four hundred, but it's not. It's the capacity of the pool with people socially distant. Oh. And so if you're in the pool, um, that area, and you're six feet apart. That has a different capacity. It's probably closer to about 120. Right. And, you know, you can't really move around, so you got to just stand in the water. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's got that has issues as well. And then there's issues about how you have to go through a shower and, and use soap before you get in mm-hmm. to the water. Um, there's equity issues about some people can then get in the pool and then other people can't. And how do you tell winners and losers and so we're we're finding it very difficult to meet um, the governor's um, explicit guidelines, and we're working as as best we can to try to figure out ways around it, um, figure out ways that we can you know comply with it, but still have it make sense for our community. Right, right. And I think I'd just like to say I think you guys are doing a great job because, like you said earlier, things could change you know tomorrow. I mean. Things are changing so quickly. Uh, they are, and and this, you know, while everyone seems to be tired and giving up on the virus, uh, I can assure you the virus is not giving up on itself or mm-hmm. on us. And so it's really important that everybody doubles down their effort and they they practice those social hygiene or those uh, hygiene uh, um, recommendations, washing hands, that sort of thing. That they wear masks when they're getting close to other people or if they're indoors. Um, and that uh, they practice social distancing. This this virus won't be gone until there's an actual vaccine that works, mm-hmm. and we're a ways away from that. So um, we can't just say, "Well, it's nice and sunny out. Forget, let's forget the the virus for a while." It, it's not how this is going to work. Right, right. What about um, employers themselves when they are trying to reopen and restructure how they're going to operate? Uh, what what should they be thinking about in terms of employees, like masks and distancing? Again, I think it's it's dependent on each business. Uh, They have their own circumstances and situations. Uh, There's a lot of advice out there. The Department of Trade and Economic Development, uh, their website has got uh, is a good starting point. The Governor's uh, COVID Task Force, uh, their their website has has also I think they're linked together. But there's some additional information. CDC has some guidance. Uh, The city website has some as well. We'd like to be, you know, offer assistance as well as the chamber if we can. Mm-hmm. And we've actually had our fire department go out um, at the, from the start and talk to business owners and make recommendations about how to have their customers you know, have a good experience but stay safe and then also how to protect their employees as best as they can. Okay, nice, nice. If, there's, if there are business owners out there who are kind of, um, maybe have questions or are confused about how to proceed, uh, wh- what's the best way for them to find information? Uh, should they call you guys, go to your website? Let's certainly start with websites. Uh, if, they, if they can, I, I, would, I would start the city website, um, um, the Department of Trade and Economic Development at the state level. Uh, if, if there's other um, confusion or, or other 
uh, ideas they'd like to pass by uh, I, a real person rather than a website, mm-hmm. uh, they they could call the non-emergency line for the fire department, and our our, our uh, personnel would be glad to help, if not even show up on site and um, do a walkthrough. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, you know, another thing that I had also read about was. Um, uh, what's it called? Contact tracing. Yes. Uh, that we're asking people to participate in that. Um, can you? I know it's. I know it's more. It's kind of a complex issue. But how? Can you kind of explain what uh, we're expected to do as community members and citizens here? What What happens is if if somebody uh, develops the virus, um, they'll be um, they'll be sort of interviewed by a contact tracer. And that person will ask a series of questions that designed to find out where that person has been and how they might have exposed other people to the virus over the past however many days. And then that tracer will then make contact to businesses, uh, individuals, and say, uh, you may have been exposed to the virus by somebody, and, and they sort of develop this um, this scenario of you might be at higher risk based upon maybe you were with the person longer in a confined space versus you walked past them on the street, for instance. Okay. And then they would make recommendations like you probably should go to the hospital or, or go to your caregiver and, and try to get a test. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should quarantine yourself until the test results are in or just you know pay attention to your own uh, body and if you seem to be developing sy- uh, symptoms, then definitely go get a test. But it's 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 crucial in stopping uh, the spread of the virus, and that's what what we've seen overseas, especially in in countries like uh, South Korea, where the the one person that gets that illness, they 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 immediately jump on this tracing, and and segregate people, uh, at least make them aware. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, it, it's America. You can tell the contact tracer, I'm not answering any questions. Um, so what we're asking for people to do is, is please participate. If you're called, take it seriously. Help them out as best you can. Um, you're protecting yourself and, and other folks in the community. Right, right. And I think that's a good point, that we're protecting ourselves and, and everyone around us as well because mm-hmm. we're all in this together. Um, another thing I wanted to ask about is um, – um, testing in public or affordable housing complexes. Yes. Um, to some of us, it might be kind of obvious, but wh- why is it so important to uh, test in uh, housing complexes? Well, in many of these uh, of these places, you, you you of course have got a, a smaller space with with a lot of people, so the density is pretty high, and those are areas where a virus like this will really take off. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can often find vo- more vulnerable populations, especially uh, seniors like in our two towers downtown that uh, mm-hmm. that have recently been tested. So we've been partnering, uh, especially through the fire department, uh, Chief Biddle's been partnering with the uh, uh, a team out of Winona, Winona Health to do these tests. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in some areas, uh, it's a lot easier to bring the test to people rather than try to get them to go to the hospital or go to their care provider. Right. So we're trying to forward, you know, load these and get the test done. To to me also, I think it's important because this fall, uh, judging upon uh, previous years, we're going to need to make a strong effort to get folks vaccinated for the flu. Mm-hmm. And again, I think it's going to be an all hands on deck. Let's get let's get the shots administered. And the vaccine out at the point of where the people are rather than expect them to show up to some other place. Right. So if we can do that, and then at some point, you know, knock on wood, we'll have this vaccine done and um, trying to uh, put a vaccine into 8 billion people's arms, you know, that's going to be a, that'll be a very difficult endeavor for us to do. Yeah. Um, so the more that we can get people used to getting their uh, health care provided to them like this, you know, right on right on where they live, I think uh, the better off we'll be. Definitely. I think that's really smart. Is there, like, if someone lives in a housing complex and they haven't been contacted yet, is there a process for them to sign up, or will the city or Winona Health contact them? No, if if if, um, if they're concerned, they should, uh, whoever's in charge of the building or a caretaker, they should contact uh, Winona Health. Uh, they could contact the county uh, health folks, and they certainly can call the, uh, the the fire department. We will be willing to help in any way that we can. Okay. Mostly, what we're doing is we're we're connecting people uh, to the resources that are out there. 
most of our firefighters are paramedics. They could administer the, the vaccine and the shots and the tests, but we're not doing that. We're, we're connecting them to the people at Winona Health who are doing it. Um, but, again, that might change when it comes to uh, trying to get 27,000 flu shots out mm-hmm. in the fall. Uh, I would imagine that, you know, that we will offer our services as well to try to make that happen as, as, as quickly as we can. Right, right. Um, I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit here, but uh, I know that not it's not only uh, individual businesses that have been shut down, but there have been city services that uh, have been a- unable to operate as, as uh at their full capacity as well. What kinds of city services will be opening up again? Well, we hope all of them. Okay. Um, you know, the, the Friendship Center has been closed since day one because mm-hmm. they deal with a population that this vaccine seems to like to to affect the most. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and then as it got into spring and summer, uh, the air conditioning, unfortunately, is on the fritz at the, uh, at the building, and we're studying whether to put a an entire building system in so the building's really not usable so uh, the library is another instance where there's been some modified opening they're receiving materials uh, there's some limited capacity to, to check out and pick up books on the sidewalk that have been placed in bags for folks hmm, so nice. um, we're doing what we can to to open these facilities and where we can we're also offering uh, services remotely or online so the Friendship Center is doing is doing several things online. The library is doing lots of things online. Um, but again, it's it it it's not as as simple as it sounds to just open things up. Uh, right. Lake Lodge, for instance, uh, you know the the boats, um, the materials that are rented out, boats, for instance, you'd have to um, disinfect them after every time someone uses it. You'd have to disinfect the um, the the oars and the paddles. And the flotation devices, right. because they're porous, they have to sit for 72 hours before you can use them again. Oh. So very, very difficult for us to, to do that. But, you know, on the flip side, we've been able to keep the li- the um, uh, our park system, by and large, open. Mm-hmm. We haven't closed down the basketball courts. Uh, when kids early on were getting a little too close together, mm-hmm. we asked them to, to you know, separate, have smaller groups, or we're going to have to take the nets down. They listened and they complied, so mm-hmm. we were able to keep those open. Playgrounds for kids, same thing. Um, I can't say enough about the people who live in Winona that, are, that have been very careful about that, and it's allowed us to keep our, our outdoor recreation services open and our parks open, um, which is a lot of people to get outside, which is what we want them to do. Right. Uh, we wouldn't be able, we would not be able to do that though if people weren't paying attention and 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 being helpful on the other side. Most other cities and communities in Minnesota, they've closed, they close their park systems, even their trails, um, and mm-hmm. you know we've we've chosen a different route because um, we, you know, the folks that live here are just doing an awesome job at at helping us out. Right. And helping themselves out in the long run. Right. I know. I know. I kind of sound like a broken record sometimes, but we're all in this together, you know. And uh, yes. I think it's important because a lot of people we have such a uh, great natural resources around here for people to enjoy, and uh, I think that's really important to the people who live here. So I think that's really good that we keep that stuff open um, as long as we're mindful of each other. Yes. You know. Um, this one. Uh, this one's kind of a personal issue for me. Um, Garage sales. I know garage sales have been allowed to open up with uh, new guidelines and restrictions. Um, um, I love garage sales personally, so I think that's great. Um, I didn't although, realize that was such a big deal. We I know when we passed it. Um, I was we were getting all sorts of good publicity for it. I was like, <laughs> my goodness, we could have done this a while back. Right, right. But uh, you know, and then I'm curious though as to how it operates. I know I've read the. Uh, Regulations, you know, stay six feet apart. Um, try to have it as much outside as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know some people might ask, well, why garage sales? You know, um, was there a call for that? Did you know a lot of people ask about that, or what was the reasoning? You know, I I, I don't know why. Okay. Um, it was it was brought forward to us. Um, there seemed to be uh, folks that were, you know, that wanted it to have garage sales and they wanted to be able to get back out and do that sort of thing and and as a matter of commerce which it is Mm -hmm. um it seemed like a fairly low-hanging fruit for us to say yeah here's some guidance you know try to keep as much outside um limit the number of people if you can do uh you know cashless transactions 
and, and you know touch those transactions as much as possible and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah reopen and um yeah you know again i was kind of floored by the response but um it, w- we really don't want to get in the way of you know of folks being able to live their lives the way that they want to it's mm-hmm. that's certainly not the intention of all these rules and regulations right so any any chance we get to to let people know it's okay to do something we you know we want to make sure that that we're doing that and giving them some guidance, some education along the way. Right, right. And I think you hit the nail on the head before when you said that, uh, you know, the people cooperating and uh, having concern for others and listening to uh, the guidelines. I think that's key, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed with our city here, I think. You know, the citizens and, and uh, the city of Winona as well. For more information, uh, what's the best way to uh, find the latest updates that the city is doing? Uh, would it be the city's website, cityofwinona.com? or yes. Okay. Okay. Are there other resources that you would recommend for people to check out right now? The, the governor's website is, is is really good as well. Okay. Um, if if you want to get in sort of the technical aspects of things, Deed has some has some great advice, especially for business owners like we like we mentioned before. If you'd like to know more about the response to or or or, or more of the science end of the virus. The University of Minnesota's Center for Disease Control, uh, headed by Dr. Uh, Osterholm, uh, outstanding resource um, for this for the you know for folks to be able to read. We get a lot of uh, information from them that that we then pass on to our task force for them to use. Um, contact tracing, especially, and, and some of the other things that have that have come up lately. Those are some of the best. Okay. Uh, and don't get too critical about our website. We're in the middle of, of uh, replacing it. Okay. So we, we, we know it's not the easiest thing to navigate, but uh, I can assure you in, a, in, a, in a, well, probably about six weeks, maybe a month, uh, we hope to have our new one up and running, and uh, that'll be a much better experience. But the COVID stuff is pretty easy to get to. Right, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I've, I've been to the city website several times in the last few days, and I thought it was quite easy. Easier than uh, operating a brand-new phone, I think. There you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say again, you know, ultimately we're all in this together. And, uh, Steve, uh, what would you like residences and businesses alike to kind of keep in mind during this time as we kind of fig- figure out where we're going to go, how we're going to do this? I, again, I think the main thing is to just always keep in the back of your mind that that this virus is all around us, mm-hmm. and um, it, our numbers go up and down as far as people who who are testing. Uh, the hospital is doing all they can. Uh, they have a limited capacity, so if there's a huge surge in in folks who need ICU beds and folks that need ventilators, you know those things are available, but um, but the numbers of them, you know, we have to really pay attention to that. And so uh, everyone just needs to really do all they can to try to keep themselves, keep their friends, if they're business owners, keep their customers uh, from getting ill. Mm-hmm. And um, this, you know, it's not gone. When we get a when we get a vaccine, we'll see what happens with the vaccine if that provides, you know, lifetime coverage or something. But um, for now, just do your very best to, uh, um, to listen to the. Listen to the guidance and, and, and try your best to, you know, to conform to what's coming out. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. We really appreciate it. Thanks for asking, Bill. We're, we're here to help, um, and, uh, and we mean it. And you know, we're, we're trying to make sense out of this. When the governor issued his guidance about outdoor seating only, several mayors around the state sent letters to the governor and said, you really should allow 25% seating indoors. Mayor Peterson from Winona wrote a letter to the governor and said, you really should allow 50% to open up indoors as well as the outdoor seating. Mm-hmm. And, that's the, and that's the decision that the governor made ultimately. So mm-hmm. um, I think we should, thank our, we should thank our mayor for persuading the governor to, to open up uh, more than 25%. And, Definitely. You know, we, we're we're going to be in there swinging for the people of the city and you know, trying to hit home runs here to to make it so that it's as safe as possible, but we can we can relax as many rules as we can. We're not always going to get it right. If we err, we hope we err on the side of public safety, um, but we're we're trying and we're we're doing the best we can. Right, right. Sounds good. Well, I've been here with Stephen Sarvi. He's the city manager for the city of Winona. And again, thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. I think it's important that we uh, let people know what's going on and how they can move forward safely. You bet. Thanks for having me. 
Thanks again to Steve Sarvey for joining us today on Culture Click. For up-to-date information on Winona's plan for reopening, visit the city's website at cityofwinona.com. For safety tips and additional information on COVID-19, search City of Winona COVID-19 on Facebook. To keep up on all things Winona and the surrounding area, tune into Culture Click Thursdays at 1230 right here on 89.5 KQAL. I'm Bill Stoneberg, and we've just heard from Winona City Manager Steve Sarvey on Culture Click. Creating cultural awareness and understanding. You've been listening to Culture Click. Support for Culture Click is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Culture Click is produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. For more information, look us up on the web at kqal.org. And thanks for listening to Culture Click. Are you interested in all things Winona and the surrounding area? Find podcasts of Culture Click and all your favorite KQAL shows at kqal.org. Culture Click is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.